Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Logical NDE. We are dedicated to bringing you interesting stories of near-death experiences from people from all over the world. If you are new to the channel and are on a quest to know about the reality of life after death, you would find our videos very intriguing which contain conversations from people about real-life near-death experiences. So now, without any further delay, let's get into today's story. Today's story comes from Natan, a 15-year-old secular Jewish Israeli boy who had a near-death experience in 2015 when he was clinically declared dead and he returned to life after 15 minutes with messages from God. Hello, I am Natan. That day when I was clinically declared dead by doctors, I was able to see planet Earth from above. I was leaving my body and going up. I don't know how to explain it. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I entered a kind of really huge tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, I was seeing a very small light. I was in a tunnel, and I don't know how to explain it. There were a lot of circles, more circles inside, and so many souls. As I started walking, the light got bigger and bigger. Finally, I reached that light. The first thing I realized about reaching heaven was when you go up there, the things you do wrong are so embarrassing. Angels tell you everything from start to end. They record it from the moment of your birth till the end, and all within seconds. It's really very humiliating. Then I encountered my personal judgment. The sins which were brought up to me during my judgment were only those of which I had not yet repented. If I had already repented of a sin, that was not brought up to me. This is why I always remind others that when you bring your sins to confession, they are washed completely away. You will face punishment due to your sins until the debt is repaid. Just like when you accidentally get someone's car, you apologize and they forgive you but the car still needs to be repaired. But God doesn't hesitate to completely forgive you. He is perfectly just and he is perfectly merciful, more than one can imagine. And even a little thing that you think wasn't a big deal is such a big deal in heaven. Even the tiniest sin. But when you do something obeying God, even if it seems so little to you, when you go to heaven, they make it such a huge deal about it. It is such a big thing that you obeyed God. Even tiny things, like fixing your attitude, rewards you so much in heaven. Then I saw Gan Eden. In the beginning, the moment I saw Gan Eden, I was saying I want to stay here. I want to stay here. But after that, I saw the other side, the levels of heaven. Then they asked me if I wanted to stay. I replied I would rather go back down. They asked me why I wanted to go back. I told them that I feel if I go back down I could do more good deeds, earn more rewards, and more of everything, and reach an even higher level. Good deeds are like an economy there. When you live for God and do anything good for God on earth, I see it as an incentive. So I would rather go back down and do more good deeds to put me into a very good economic position forever. Why would have I stayed there and missed another chance? There are different levels of heaven out there. I often get asked who gets to go to the highest level, and I always reply that the one who repents gets to the highest level. However, I want to tell you that it is not the one who repents out of fear of punishment, but the one who repents out of fear of heaven fear of not being embarrassed in heaven. And a perfect act of contrition washes away all your sin, but in order to make this act perfect you must not be sorry out of fear of hell, but rather out of love of God and to please him. So, in order to achieve the highest level of grace that we all are capable of, we must repent and despise our sins, not because we are afraid of the pain, we ourselves will have to endure as punishment, but because we are afraid of hurting God himself. That's the key to the highest level of heaven. Before we continue the story, 
We would like you to take a moment to sincerely appreciate your support by liking, sharing and subscribing to our channel if you genuinely enjoy viewing these kinds of stories. This way, you will be able to stay up to date on all of our new releases. Make sure to link up with us right away. Finally, I met Messiah. He is first of all someone who can't sin, someone who repented and didn't commit any transgressions. It can't be that the Messiah is someone who committed transgressions. He can be someone who people actually know very well. So many people know him, according to what I understood, but everyone will be very surprised at his redemption. He must be here. He is not dead. And one day he will come for word, and everyone will be surprised. I can tell you that the redemption of the Messiah is going to happen very soon. According to what I understood there, this is certainly going to happen. When I was up there, I was able to understand things that were going to happen in the world. And from what I understood, very bad things are going to happen. But it depends on who will do them. The only way to avert it is that all of us repent, and that won't happen. It was also revealed to me that there is going to be something that is called a very big war, and everyone, the whole world, will be involved in this war, as I understood it. The whole world will be involved in this chaos, all Goyim, all Arabs, the Muslims. Everyone will come against the nation of Israel and fight in this war. This will take place quite soon. Also, I know that the Messiah will kill Gog, the leader of the nation of Magog, who will be a critical player in the final war of Gog and Magog. The Messiah will kill him and bury him in Israel. This claim is also consistent with a prophecy in Ezekiel. I also saw that the moment Mount of Olives split into two and created a valley, then the Messiah will stand at the entrance but he won't see who is religious, who has a beard, and who a person is. What he will see is a person's deed. He looks for the holiness of a person. He will smell every person. He will smell whether someone has holiness, whether he is pure, whether he has obeyed God's commandments, whether he has done kind deeds. To see if he really has a real fear of heaven and not just fear of punishment and things like that, he will determine who is worthy to be saved. One thing I keep on emphasizing is how important it is to read the Holy Scriptures. Specifically, we need to study the Torah. In the lowest level of heaven, I even saw people studying the Torah. It will help us improve our lives and hereafter. Catholics know the Torah as the Pentateuch. They know it as the first five books of the Bible that Moses wrote. Of course, if we want to understand how to avoid sin, we must first strive to understand the commandments. In addition, we Catholics need to read our Bible more and take it much more seriously. The Bible is true, and we should all do well to read it more and with faith. Since I return to life with these messages, all I aim to do better deeds in this life is to obey God and to reach the highest level in heaven. That's it for today, folks. Have you ever discovered a new realm in your near-death experiences? Have you seen Jesus or other crucial figures in your near-death experience? If yes, make sure to leave a detailed comment where we can read your thoughts on the experience and impact of your near-death moment. In case you liked this video, do not forget to give it a big thumbs up. Also, Subscribe to our channel to support us in growing it. Share the video with your friends and family so they can have a fair taste of life after death and near-death experiences through our channel. Until the very next time, stay blessed.